After the manager mocked and humiliated Tommy, a simple janitor for a vast California insurance company, all the other employees begin to do the same. What no one in the office expected, not even Tommy, was that soon everyone there would become his employees. Tommy was a simple man used to being down in the dumps of life. After all the adversity he had faced as a boy, he no longer felt the impact of bad news. Tommy's father had served in the Marine Corps for over a decade, but tragically passed away during a covert operation gone wrong in the Middle East. His situation, while no bed of roses before, worsened after the death of the head of the family. His mother, Daisy Price, worked as a waitress, but even with the child support from the Marines, didn't make enough to support her son and provide for all his basic needs. As a result, she was forced to work another job to make ends meet. It was a strenuous routine, starting every day at 5 a.m. to get ready and catch the bus and ending only at 11 p.m., leaving her physically and mentally exhausted. Perhaps due to her intense schedule, Daisy fell ill when her son was only 12 years old. Even though she always felt tired, slept very little, and had constant headaches, the woman had no choice but to continue working to feed her son. Tommy watched his mother's suffering and tried to do what he could to help her. The young boy learned to cook and was responsible for caring for the whole house, but he still felt that it was not enough and that he should do even more. He tried to get a job in a neighborhood grocery store, but his mother forbade him, saying she did not want her son to live an adult life so soon, and she continued pretending everything was under control. Little did she know that this decision might cost her her life. Daisy Price died of a brain aneurysm that could have been treated had she sought help earlier. Tommy was devastated. After losing his father and mother, he was alone in the world. Being a conscious and rational boy, he was already preparing his things, knowing he would have to go to an orphanage in the next few days. But due to luck, bad luck really, the police discovered that the young boy had an aunt whom he had never met. They decided she would be the one to take custody of the child. The aforementioned bad luck is because his aunt Ellie was not exactly the type of person who loved or even liked children. In fact, she only agreed to keep Tommy to receive his late father's pension, which would help her live a better life. Living with his aunt and her husband was a terrible experience for Tommy. They worked all day, and the boy spent most of the time locked in his room with nothing to do but stare at the walls. Since he had moved there, he could not make any friends and had not adapted well to his new school. As the years went by, his aunt Ellie became even stricter, clearly someone who was no good at dealing with a young teenager. She only let the boy go from home to school and school to home. As a result, Tommy grew up frustrated and friendless with no support, even from his own family. There was not a day that the boy did not remember his late mother and father and how much they had sacrificed so that he could have a decent life. But now that he was alone in the world, no one else would be willing to do this for him. That is why at 13 years old, he started to devise a plan inside of his room. The young man began keeping all the money his aunt gave him for school lunch in a secret box in a false bottom inside his closet. In addition, while his aunt collected the salary he earned each month as a dishwasher, he hid the little he received in tips. He was saving money so that when he came of age, he could escape as soon as possible from that house, which besides not giving him any attention, was the place of endless abuse by his aunt. But Tommy also knew he couldn't just run away without preparation, so he followed his late mother's advice. No matter what happens, my son, study. They can take your house, money, and possessions, but they will never snatch your knowledge from you, so study. And that's what the teenager did all those years in high school, dedicating himself to the maximum and earning the highest grade point average in his class. On his 18th birthday, finally of legal age, he ran away from his Aunt Ellie's house, promising never to return. He packed a suitcase with his few clothes, took the money he had saved, and left, searching for a cheap place to spend the night. His time at school was over, and it was only a matter of time before his money ran out as well. Tommy was searching for office work, hoping his intelligence and high grades would be enough to find a good job. However, the fact that he had only worked washing dishes was a major obstacle in his search. No one was willing to hire an 18-year-old with no related experience. Only one local called him back to offer a position. Look, I know you wanted an office position, but your experience is not even close to what we require for the position. 
The most I can do to help is to offer you a position as a janitor in the building, said Dexter Harris, the company's senior manager. Of course, this was not Tommy's dream job, but he was not discouraged, knowing that every job was worthwhile and that, eventually, his life would improve and he would find something more in line with what he was looking for. Arriving for his first day at work at the company, the young man was oriented by the head of the human resources department, who only cared to ask a few questions and paid little attention to the new hire. As he left the room, Tommy looked around and noticed that people did not seem very happy about his being hired. Everyone seemed to look at the man with hostility, almost as if they did not want him to be there. Innocent Tommy had no idea why they seemed so hostile. As he soon discovered, it was all because of Dexter Harris, the senior manager who offered Tommy the job. He was the one who set the tone for the jokes and evil glances around the office. Before Tommy began the job, Dexter repeatedly told all the other employees how badly dressed and thin Tommy was. This was, unfortunately, true, as a young man had no dress clothes or iron to iron them, making him look a little sloppier than the other employees. He also ate very little, leaving him thin as a rail. Someone should warn him that it's not Halloween and he should change his clothes, Dexter said about him ironically, drawing laughter from the whole office who, to please their boss, laughed along with everything the man said. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for Tommy to know about the jokes being told about him. The looks of the other employees were noticeable every time he entered a room to take out the trash or sweep the floor. What can I do? He is the senior manager of the office, and I am just a mere floor cleaner. I had better keep quiet and hope they don't fire me, reflected the young man with a frown. However, no one could complain or make bad jokes about the quality of his work, which left the young man with some hope of keeping his job. Since he was hired, the offices had been sparkling clean, and it was impossible to find even a speck of dust on the desks or to see a dirty floor. The garbage was picked up every day at the same time without fail. This gained Tommy some respect from a few employees who resisted the pressure to laugh along with their boss. Among these was the sweet and beautiful Holly, only two years older than Tommy, who had been hired a few months earlier and was still in training. She stood out from the others, not only for her beauty, but also for her people management skills and ability to resolve conflicts quickly. Not surprisingly, Holly attracted the interest of many men in the office, including Dexter, as soon as she arrived. Despite being in his 40s, the senior manager was unmarried and childless and was known for always being in different relationships, often with younger women. When Tommy, the simple janitor, asked Holly to go to the movies, he never imagined that she would accept so quickly. On the other hand, the young woman had no idea that Dexter, her manager and boss, was also interested in her, as he had never made any moves, so she didn't think it would be a problem to go on a date with Tommy. But then, the office gossip started, and the hostility toward the janitor grew even worse. After going out a few times together, rumors started circulating in the office that the gorgeous young lady was getting serious with the janitor. This rumor quickly reached Dexter, who was outraged to hear who she had chosen over him. Who does he think he is to do this to me? I'm going to end this ridiculousness and make him pay for it, said the manager, pounding his fists on his desk. Unfortunately, the following day, Dexter had already made good on his promise, transforming young Tommy's work environment into absolute chaos. When the young man arrived at work, put on his uniform, and picked up his brooms and rags, he noticed no one was talking or even looking at him. He said good afternoon, and nobody answered him. It was as if he was talking to the walls. Tommy thought this wouldn't affect his relationship with Holly, but when he passed by her desk, he realized he was wrong. The girl wouldn't even look at him and continued working. She feared losing her job as much as Tommy did and didn't want to displease her boss or start a war over what she had said was a mere janitor with no future. I think you understand now, don't you? I'm in charge here. I run this company. I run the employees and I run you too. So I suggest you find another girlfriend far away from me, you stupid illiterate, screamed Dexter. The janitor kept quiet and left continuing his duties for the day. What hurt him the most in this whole story was Holly and how she treated him. He knew they were not in a long-term relationship, but the young man thought she would treat him better than the other employees. After all the uncomfortable situations he had been through, Tommy was at the bottom of the barrel, ready to resign and try to find another job. However, he knew this would be risky as the job market was not so hot. 
It is hard to say what would have happened if Tommy had not found a puppy stranded on the streets. As he did every evening after work, he was walking home when the little animal began to follow him. The man tried in vain to chase it away, but the animal followed him all the way to his rented apartment. Well, I guess now I have no choice but to adopt you, thought Tommy as he walked up the stairs with the puppy. His neighbor spotted him and immediately said, My goodness, young man, you can't even feed yourself. You are as thin as a toothpick, and now you've adopted a dog? Your heart is good, but you need to use your head to survive in this world. Tommy was very friendly with his neighbor. She was an old lady who apparently had no family since she was always alone in her apartment. The old woman always advised the boy who had no friends and was glad to have someone to talk to. Tommy took this advice into his life and promised he would use more reason and less emotion in the future. The janitor didn't know that Dexter, his manager, was hatching a plan to get him humiliated and fired once and for all. The opportunity to put this plan into practice soon appeared and Dexter took advantage. All the employees were looking forward to the company's CEO, Mrs. Murphy, visiting their branch office. She was the name and face of the company and there wasn't a person who wouldn't try to impress her, maybe to get a promotion or a better relationship with the boss. Tommy was the only one who was relaxed since the company's CEO would hardly be interested in mops and cleaning products. But it turned out that he was completely wrong on that count. Mrs. Murphy strolled through the office, analyzing the conduct of each employee in each department. As Dexter noticed his boss approaching, he purposely knocked over a cup of coffee on the carpet in his office. The brown beverage spilled out and stained everything in a matter of seconds. For the previous few weeks, Dexter had locked his office with a padlock every time he left for home preventing Tommy from coming in to clean up after work, which left the place quite a mess. So when she walked in, it was the first thing Mrs. Murphy noticed. Dexter, what is this? Doesn't this branch office have a janitor? Your office is filthy, she said to her manager, who quickly launched his retort. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just that our new janitor isn't efficient the way he should be. This is all his fault, really. The boy is very clumsy and has no future. Honestly, I don't even know what to do with him. The director observed the scene again, reflected for a few seconds, and asked to see the janitor in the conference room within 10 minutes. Almost everyone in the office heard this and worried about what might happen to young Tommy. When the janitor entered the room, his downcast look broadcast his concerns. Good afternoon, sir. Please pull up a chair and explain your behavior as soon as possible, Mrs. Murphy said. Tommy tried to say a few words, but the fear of making things worse was greater, so he chose to remain silent. Finally, the executive director stood up and walked closer to the worker. Okay, you can tell me the truth. Dexter is getting on your nerves, isn't he? The lady asked. The janitor nodded with a curious look, confirming Mrs. Murphy's suspicions. It turned out that Dexter was frequently getting into these kinds of messes, and several employees had spoken with the executive in the past. The woman also noticed that only his office was dirty in the entire building, which raised her suspicions. Dexter had had problems with several other employees, generating costly labor lawsuits for the company, and this situation had simply been the last straw. After clarifying and telling Mrs. Murphy the truth, the two talked for almost three hours. Seeing that night was approaching, she phoned the secretary and called for the director of the Human Resources Department and Dexter. The senior manager was fired for generating a toxic work environment and causing revenue loss from all the lawsuits against the firm. Moreover, all the other businesses in the region would learn about everything he did, making it difficult for Dexter to get another job in his field. On the other hand, Tommy was able to impress Mrs. Murphy with his gentle manner and intelligence, and the woman decided to conduct a job interview soon after. The young man performed impressively in the interview. Even without experience, he seemed to have more thoughtful plans and solutions than any other employee. Thus, he was promoted to junior salesman, but after only two years, he became head of the entire sales department, thanks to his competence and dedication. From that moment on, all the employees treated the former janitor very differently. Even Holly said that she had thought it over and now thought they would make a beautiful couple, asking forgiveness for how she had treated him. But Tommy refused to forgive her. He never liked opportunistic people, and he was unwilling to give her another shot. If you liked this video, please leave a like. The other story appearing on the screen now will likely please you too. So have a good day and see you in the next video.